Hello there, I'm Kendall Weaver, and my goodness, first off, you have to forgive me because it's been a long time since we did an episode of Life on Kauai, but the great surprise is we're improving things. I'm not just going to drive around the island showing you stuff anymore. I'm actually going to take you to places, talk to people, give you the full tour. We are starting off with something ever so special. Look, there's Lihue down the bottom right-hand corner of your map. Now, you're going to take your rented Jeep Wrangler, I'm just guessing here, and you're just going to drive... I don't know, about this far, right there. That's it, we're there. We're at the Plantation House at Gaylords. If you've been here before to the island, you'll remember it as Gaylords at Kilohana. Uh, it's still called Gaylords, but it's now the Plantation House at Gaylords. There's a guy who started this whole thing. His name is Fred Atkins. He is in charge today, 35 years after it started. Here's my conversation with Fred. So tell me first off how you got how you got wrapped up in the whole Gaylords Plantation House Wilcox the whole <laughs> thing here that you have. Well, a little bit of history. You know, this June 16th will be 35 years old. So it's it's been a a, a fun ride. Um, so that I, that was the point at which it became a restaurant and business. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we opened the plantation. 35 years ago. Wow. And um, prior to that, I was in management at one of the. Uh, local resorts here, and they had sold uh, to um, a developer that wanted it to close it for a couple of years, and it reopened as a Westin Kauai. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? And uh, we did a lot of convention groups at the, at the resort, it was called the Kauai Surf, uh, but we never took people off property because there just wasn't a venue for large convention groups to go off property. So I knew about the home, uh, we'd actually looked at it in 1982, but it it uh, hadn't uh, been lived in for many years and oh, it was really, really tough. So wow. um, November 82, we had a hurricane and it caused a lot of damage and they did a lot of uh, restoration to the home. And so in 1985, when we were in this transition with the hotels, I came back and I looked at it and I went, oh, the inside, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty well fixed up. The ground hadn't been lived in for years, but wow. that's something you can do. You know, restoring a home like this was way over my budget. So. Yeah. I got uh, five uh, investors, and we set up a general limited partnership. And, wow. uh, and the rest is history. We started working on it in late '85, and we opened in June of '86. Wow. Yeah, and that's Wait. including the restaurant and the shops and the carriage program. But when we opened, it was basically we wanted to do the um, all these parties. But then they said, "Oh, you need to take over the whole 36 acres." Mm. And we thought, "Well, I think we can." Uh, we better do you know a full visitor attraction. So it started out small, 36 acres. Mm -hmm. Now we have 104 acres. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's grown up over the years. And uh, so then, what is your role here? Well, I'm the general partner of uh, Kauai Kelohana Partners that was put together to um, create the visitor attraction. And okay, so tell me about when I first got to Kauai. One of this is one of the first things I saw, of course, and it's one of the things I recommend when somebody comes here. This oh, is kind you. of a must do. Uh -huh. I just think it's on that list. Um, it's such a beautiful, elegant home. The house is, what, about 16,000 square feet? It, it was about 16, including uh, the restaurant, and then the lanai that we have right out oh. here outside, we added another couple thousand square feet. And so the restaurant, do you know how many seating is in there? Yeah, right now, um, I think we do about 110. We yeah. had a lot more tables. We had about eight more tables right. in the restaurant um, prior to COVID. Right. And then we did the social, you know, the distancing, the six feet and stuff. Yeah. But everyone loved the uh, spacing oh, really? a lot better, you hmm. know, and so we never put it back, and we're not really over COVID yet. But yeah, the it, reason I, we were able to do that, sorry, was that we added this lanai. Right, so we were right. able to spread people out. Right, and I always thought the experience here was that you were kind of half outdoors. Yeah, as, it's, as it's a eating. garden setting for Anyways. sure. Uh, what do you, how do you describe the menu? Yeah, that's hard to describe. I think, you know, it's, it's really a, a total creation of our executive chef. We were closed for 14 months. And one of the, you know, there's got to be positives from all negatives. Sure. And the positive was our chef was able to sit down and write his own menu. And, you know, a lot of people say uh, restaurants have, you know, Pacific Rim or, and, and, or you know, uh, Hawaiian Fusion. Right. You know, so many different names are thrown around. But, Basically, um, I think our menu just represents a little bit of uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been getting just incredible, great reviews since we reopened wow. uh, on our staff, but on our food. And we, 
a lot of people really cut down on their menus, you know, yeah. after yeah. COVID, you know, they'll see one page. Well, we did a, we kind of took a chance and did a full menu and people really appreciate it. It's a little more uh, costly on food costs, yeah. but um, people, you know, people want choices and, and we give them a lot of choice, whether it's for lunch or dinner. I've always found it to be an amazing atmosphere. Um, that's the restaurant. Now tell me briefly, just uh, number them off. I, there's a train going around here. <laughs> there's some donkeys out in the pasture I oh, see. Yeah. What else do you have here? There's retail shops in this building. Uh, how long is the interview? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I can, can tell, tell you how we started. We started with 36 acres. And as I mentioned, our main thing was doing convention parties. Right. Then we decided, okay, we need to do a restaurant. So we opened up a restaurant. And then we had a carriage program. And uh, we have shops. In the home, there's uh, six shops. There's 11 shops on property. Oh, sure. So we figured the only way we can uh, develop 67 acres and make it interesting was to put in an old narrow gauge railroad, which is the same exact type of engines that were used when they went from steam engine to um, the diesel electric. And diesel electric, you can get in and just start them up, right? Mm. And steam engine, you got you know, a little more work. A little more yeah. work. So we weren't ready for that. Yeah. It was hard enough laying two and a half miles of rail. That was uh, yeah. There's not a lot of railroads on. An no, there used to be quite house. a bit. There was 11 sugar plantations on Kauai, right. and most of them uh, used you know by the. Before they went to the cane haul trucks, they were using the diesel electric engines to get the cane from the field into, uh, you know, the sugar mills. So what does so, the train do today? So the train does, what we did first, we created an agricultural park. So the 67 acres in the back, basically, if you go through there on the train, you're going to see everything that's being uh, tried in Hawaii right now to take the place of sugar. Mm -hmm. So. We put in 12 acres of exotic fruit trees. We put in taro fields, banana fields, uh, Hawaiian hardwood trees to see how they grow at this elevation. We put in North and South American trees to see how they would do. And now that it's about 18 years old, it's totally mature. We're using a lot of the fruits for, um, we have specials every day that uh, they go out, they pick the fruit and make the specials from, you know, it's, a hundred, it's almost 800 uh, citrus trees. Wow. From citrus to, you know, mangoes and acerola cherry, That's lychee, a, longan, uh, mountain apple. So we take whatever's in season and we make a, we make the, and we even grow our own sugar cane to make our cane juice to make uh, our famous Mai Tai. And so you get on the train, you go around, I mentioned the donkey, there's little yeah. animals out there. Well, you get on the train and, and halfway out, which is a real big highlight, it, they say it's just for the kids, but the parents enjoy it. Sure. There's a stop and we have um, some um, pigs out there, we got horses and cattle and yeah. sheep, and they get the stop and, it's, and they can feed the animals. Yeah. And it's really hilarious. I mean, they, the parents get as much involved yeah. or more. But and now that it's so grown up, uh, it's incredible. So we have that going on. And another way you can see the property, we opened up about six months before COVID, it's a, a rum safari. And that is, that's something that's just gone off the charts. It seems so like it. I, I've heard about it a lot. I haven't taken it yet. Let's yeah, we should go there. on it. There's you a go lot of it. safari, open air truck, and rum. Yeah, and rum, yeah. It's a fun <laughs> way to see 104 acres. So what we did, we created, my son actually, he owns it and he put it all together, but he created uh, in a really tropical valley that's beyond where you saw the pig stop. Uh, they go down there and there's a boardwalk and you walk through this jungle, which is amazing with a creek going by it. And then he built a really beautiful pavilion right in the middle of this jungle where you do your tasting of the Kaloa rum. But you know, it's been really gratifying because our staff is what makes me feel happy about still being involved because they just want to share the Aloha spirit here with visitors, locals. We, uh, when we opened our whole goal this is a very private estate. No one can come here unless it was a fancy party that was being thrown by uh, Gaylord Wilcox. And he did a lot of those in the courtyard. That's why it's so big. Um, but we felt, you know, this has been a private home if we can get the locals to embrace, you know, and they were really excited about seeing this home, just coming in it. And so they've supported us all these years. And I had a feeling in the beginning it was the locals telling the visitors. We figured if the locals are happy, the visitors will find out about it. Hi, I'm Laurie. I'm one of the mixologists here at the Mojico Lounge, a beautiful plantation house. We love working here. We love the guests that come and go. And this is some genuine stuff here. Look at this sugar cane. What are you going to do with it? So I actually start my day in the orchard. I pick the sugar cane outside. We juice this down for our Mai Tai. So we're one of the only places I want to stay on the island that actually has from 1945, it's actually a replica of the 45 machine. We probably use it more today than they did back then. 
Scrub my sugar cane down, split it in half to give it a nice straight edge. That way I can get a better juice going on. So here we go. My little gathering down there. And you just grind away. The machine crushes down the sugar cane. The juice collects at the bottom. Once I get enough juice at the bottom, I'll strain that out and that'll go into our certain cocktails. Like for today, we're using it in our Mai Tai. Nothing goes to waste. The chef will actually use some of the dried up stocks. You can use it for smoking your fish, smoking your meat. Hmm. For us local people, it gets down to about 70 degrees. We dry it out and we fire up the fireplace. <laughs> you never know how much juice you're gonna get. It really depends on the amount of rain. And even though Kauai rains every day, it takes thousands of gallons just to get like small acreage of sugar cane to be nice and juicy. Hmm. So. We've been pretty lucky, even though it's been dry, to have nice juicy stalks. All right, let's see what we got going on. So get Amazing. that little stalk. Good that it's a working replica, huh? Not too bad, I know. Not too bad for a nice little yield. So a little bit of sugar cane, and it's kind of amazing how many gallons of sugar cane juice it actually takes to produce just a teaspoon of sugar. This is actually a nice little yield for such a small stalk. Wow. For you, my friend, try that. <laughs> it's my favorite place. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. This is amazing. This is great. So you're going to stay? As, as long as <laughs> we, we can. As long as, we, as long as we're allowed. <laughs> All right. That's about the sentiment you get from everybody when it comes to Gaylords. It's the plantation house at Gaylords. Now, we just scratched the surface, by the way, in this episode. There's a huge luau. It's about uh, 750 people. It's right out back of where you're looking here. You just can't see it when you're sitting having dinner. You might hear it a little bit during the evening, but it's actually pretty secluded back there. So check out the Luau. Uh, check out Plantation House by Gaylords. Check out all of the 11 different merchants through who were there, Kaloa Rum and all the others. Check out the railway. It's, it's all in that one spot. It's right there in Lihue. Look it up. Uh, do your research, and we hope to see you here on Kauai real soon. And do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. That'll help us out a lot on life on Kauai. Thank you. See you next time.